and welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mailbag episode where we play your voicemails and read your reviews if we have any. I'm Allie Siegel. I'm Melissa Stetton. Do we got any reviews? I don't think we do, unfortunately. Fuck that shit. Fucking fuck. We do have a lot of new patrons this week, so thank you all of you yes. who joined. Please continue if you want access to bonus episodes, lunar readings. This week we have Maria and John Tenney on the Patreon for the podcast talking about UFOs and whether or not aliens exist. Mm -hmm. So uh, join our, uh, I believe it's our $10. Oh no, $5 gets you the the true true crime crime episodes. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Join our $5 tier. Yeah. Should we get into the voicemails? We absolutely should. Hi, um, my name is Michelle Mosier. I actually used to host a uh, co-host a true crime podcast and did one of the guest hosts with uh, with Allie. And I was calling because I, Melissa, I am also from Kalamazoo. Yeah. And I have a true crime story from Ooh. Kalamazoo that I wanted to share. Oh, hell so, yeah. Um, it was February 20th of 2016. I was living in Kalamazoo, working in a brewery in Portage, and we were all finishing up a shift, and we saw that there was a shooting nearby. And so we were, you know, just doing, like, our normal cleaning stuff and watching the news, and this guy, Jason Dalton, who was 45 and an Uber driver, was on a shooting spree. So I guess at 4 o'clock that day, he had picked up somebody, and during that drive, got a phone call. After he got off the phone, he started driving super irrationally, um, entered oncoming traffic, drove through the median, sideswiped a different car, and the passenger in the back was just begging him to stop so that he could get out. So Oof. at the stop sign, passenger jumps out of the car, dials 911, but Jason Dalton is still driving around. An hour later, he accepts another fare from a woman asking him to pick up her boyfriend at a nearby apartment complex. So he pulls in, and when he is looking for that guy, he sees this woman. Uh, Her name is Tiana Carruthers, and he asks her if she's the person he's supposed to pick up. When she says no, he fired several shots into her chest. And she was able to survive by just pretending to be dead. Whoa. So uh, the woman who had initially texted the ride texted Dalton with a new address and he told her that he could no longer complete the ride because quote, something had come up. So he runs the red light, hits another car, flees the scene, and goes home to his wife and children. And he asks them to just stay home, keep their handgun close for safety. He goes to an ATM to withdraw some money. And uh, this is a fun fact. It turns out he was actually a member of the credit union that I worked at for my day job because thanks to student loans and the uh, low, low pay wages of the Midwest, uh, I was working two jobs at that time. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. And uh, so, yeah, he goes, he withdraws the money. And a couple hours later, he goes back out to take more Uber fares. And most of those passengers said nothing was really strange about his behavior. But at 10.01 p.m., he pulled into a Kia dealership, which, Melissa, you might know this. It was on Stadium Drive. Oh, yeah. And uh, he shot and killed a father and son who were uh, oh. looking for the son's car. So they were crazy. There's a part two. Oh yeah, God. I remember when this was happening. It was horrifying. I think he went to like a cheesecake factory, too. Oh, no, uh, it's too long. Uh, so Richard and Tyler Smith were shopping for cars for Tyler and exactly. Tyler's girlfriend was sitting in the back seat of the car hiding, watching them get shot. Oh, God. So the story hits the news, and, you know, we're at work, and I realize, oh, no, that key dealership is less than a mile from the apartment complex I live in. Scary. So I'm like, all right, we're all going to stay here. Manager lets us stay at the brewery so that we don't have to go out while there's an active shooter on the road. And after that key is shooting, Dalton heads down the street to the Cracker Barrel, oh, where yes. he walks up to a white van, asks the passenger a question, shoots her, and then shoots yes. the people in the adjacent vehicle. Oh, my so God. So one person, Abigail Cox, was wounded. Um, she was shot in the head. And then four people passed away um, in that shooting. So Mary Lou, Mary Jo Nye, Dorothy Judy Brown, and Barbara Hawthorne were all killed. 
So by now, the police are all uh, launching a full-on manhunt. Dalton's still driving around taking Uber fares. And uh, meanwhile, we decide, well, hey, uh, instead of just sitting here at work, let's go downtown and just, like, hang out somewhere because they were downtown was far from the initial shooting. And as we were sitting there having a couple of beers at Shakespeare's, uh, oh, I love Shakespeare. We see yeah. a bunch of cop cars go by. Like, oh, I wonder where they're going. Now, Dalton, meanwhile, while he is driving around taking more fares, one of the Crazy. passengers asked him jokingly if he was the shooter, <gasps> and he said no. <laughs> Liar. Oh, God. Uh, and, yeah, so we're sitting there having beers, six police cars fly by, sirens blazing, and turned out Jason Dalton was apprehended about four blocks from where we were just sitting and relaxing. And I actually also found out one of my friends posted on Twitter an Uber receipt where he had ridden with Jason Dalton that Ooh. evening. Oh said, my you know, God. I wasn't any weirder than your normal weird, weird driver that you sometimes have to deal with. But Crazy. Uh, apparently he was one of the lucky ones. So um, February 22nd, 2016, Dalton was arraigned on 16 charges, including six counts of murder, two counts of assault with intent to commit murder, and eight counts of using a firearm during the commission of a felony. And he pled guilty, citing insanity. So Jason Dalton apparently said that the Uber app was possessed by the devil and had taken over his mind and body. Quote, I just tapped it, and then there was like a devil head that popped up. It was some sort of like horned Orange head like a cow head or something. I oh, pressed that button, boy. and that's where all the problems went after that. So. There's one more part. Jesus, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, my... I can't remember my grandma or my aunt used to live in that the trailer park that was behind the Cracker Barrel where he uh, okay, went. Sorry, this is the last sentence, I promise. Oh, no, uh, this is great. There's my fun Kalamazoo true crime hometown murder story. Uh and I just, after finding out that Melissa's from Kalamazoo, I was like, mm-hmm. I have to share this story. So, uh, thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, keep up the good work. I don't know, keep up the weird. mediocre thank work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Remember that happened in 2016, just driving around Kalamazoo, shooting people randomly. That's really, that's, I mean, it's crazy that, that driver shot people and then would like do a few normal drives and then go back to it. Like what was going on? His Uber app was possessed by the devil. Jesus Christ. I mean, well, thank you for, I mean, you essentially just called in with a whole episode. Thank you. That was was great. Um, Yeah. I forgot that. That's so crazy. My God. Bonkers. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy that we get into cars with strangers just because it's Uber or Lyft. I don't. If you think about it, I don't really take Ubers anymore. Well, me either. It's like last resort because I don't trust anyone. <laughs> it's scary. no. I mean, I'll do it to the. I do it to the airport, mm-hmm. and that's it. I mean, I don't drink, so I don't. I don't need. Yeah, I don't need to especially go anywhere. At, yeah, if you're drunk at night coming from the bar, I wouldn't get in an Uber. No, it's like, oh my god, nah. we don't know these people. I'm good. Okay, next message. Hello, this is a message message for the web crawlers. Uh, my name is Amberly, and I'm calling oh, in because you. I have heard several people named Amberly yeah. who have called in. Yeah. And um, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I didn't even realize <laughs> I would be this nervous when I called That's in. So cute. I had my whole spiel planned. And now, <laughs> uh, gone to shit. Yeah, no, I'm such an idiot. But anyway, people are um, so cute. So I um, had never really heard anyone else with my name. And I was like, oh, I want to call in and just see what their male names are, how they spell their names, and all that good stuff. It's all the same. Um, So I also, what prompted me to call in, I've been listening for probably, I don't know, three years. And I just now joined Patreon. And what prompted me to call in was, Allie, you talked about doing a Vampire Diaries Oh, yeah. uh, the Patreon special and I'm like okay I have to do this because I am a huge oh, Vampire oh, Diaries oh. fan so um, I would love that so if you're in it and you want to do like a recap of episodes I would be 
all in. I've probably watched the series like six or seven times all the way Whoa. through. So, oh, love it. Love it. Um, and yes, I am an old lady who <laughs> loves watching teen drama. <laughs> Me too. Sorry, not sorry. Me too. Um, the other thing, you guys, on your last Galapagos Island, uh, well, it wasn't your last um, podcast, but I was listening to that, and you were talking about going to the Galapagos Islands okay. and how do you get there, and I just wanted to throw out there that I am a travel agent, and oh. I'm contracted with uh, Disney and uh, National Geographic, and oh. uh, hmm. Nat Geo has some really great cruises to the Galapagos, also uh, to Antarctica and Bhutan. I don't know where the site Bhutan Japan, is. Japan, did you say? Now. I don't know. Um, but I could get you there if you want to go. To the discount? <laughs> anyway, Bhutan? I love you guys so much. I can't believe I'm this nervous. I've been listening forever. And, um, yeah, I uh, just love you guys so much. And you're the only Patreon I will probably ever subscribe to. Wow. And I'm going to go leave a review right now. Wow. And I uh, hope you guys are having a fabulous summer. Okay. Love you. Bye. That is crazy. We have another Amber Lee. Then there's I was like going to say, Amber like, that's Leah. insane. Um, I wonder if she could hook a sister up with a discount. <laughs> Give me a discount to the Galapagos Islands. Or what'd you say? Antarctica? I think it was Antarctica. I know there's cruises that go down there. I do that. Um, yeah. Okay, here's the thing. So I finished Vampire Diaries. I've moved on to the originals, and then I was going to move on to Legacies because they're all like related to each other. It's three different shows. Oh, there um, is? Yeah. Oh. Um, here's my thing with Vampire Diaries. I like started, I honestly started getting really confused. Like starting season six, Uh-oh. I was like, I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, but maybe that'll be fun hearing me trying to figure out what's going on each episode. I think episode. there's a vampire that's like in love with this other vampire. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's like the easy part. Um, like everyone at, at some point, everyone is dead. And then at another point they come back alive and then they're there and they're not. And oh, they're, yeah, Cause it's they're just vampires. Like, they come back to life. No, it's like not even that, Melissa. Like, I wish I could explain it to you. I have no idea what this show is about. And then also each character plays like three different characters. Oh, really? Because there's something called doppelgangers. Oh, so like, yeah. So like each and like each character has like one to two different doppelgangers. So there's like oh, three no. of each character. And I'm like, who's talking right now? Who is this person? Who's dead? Who's alive? Like, oh. it's just really confusing. But maybe I'll do it. You want to make a spreadsheet? I honestly do. Okay, next message. Hello. I'm calling to ask about the paywall situation. Are you still going to have main episodes? And what will they be about? I understand the paywall, but I just need to know. What is it going to be bimbo now? Or what's going on? Anyways, love you. And also, here's my other friends that also listen to the podcast. Love y'all, Kev. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Okay, so the the what's still going to be free on our regular feed is Bimbo News and the Mailbag episodes. Yes. What's on Patreon are our true crime, you know, quote, true crime episodes. Yes. Are going to be on Patreon. And the one this week is with Maria. Maria is going to be joining us for the Patreons. Yes. And the one this week is about the ufo congressional hearing john tenney is on there too so those so bimbo news and mailbag will be free yes forever um and then behind the paywall like melissa said is true crime as well as other stuff that we've yeah. added um other so i'm gonna stuff. be doing like lunar readings uh tv recaps um we're gonna recap other. my strange addiction <laughs> My Where are they addiction. now yeah uh, still maybe 90 day uk um so yeah yeah so there's, that's your answer. Yes. Hi, this is for the web crawlers. Um, I'm listening to the most recent bimbo news, which by the way, thank you so much for adding this. This has made my entire life because I hate reading the news and now I can just listen to you guys. But exactly. I just wanted to call and say that as a cruise head, I don't know why everyone's freaking out over the size of this new cruise ship. I actually went on... <laughs> Another one of Royal Caribbean's cruise ships that is only a little bit smaller. Oh. And it's still obviously ginormous. And I know that 
most people are like either like they fall into loving cruises or hating cruises. I happen to be a cruise lover, mm-hmm. but I just don't know why everyone's freaking out. I feel, I feel like there's other cruise ships that are almost Stop the same size, out. and I survived. I had a really good time. I don't know. I just feel like everyone should give it a shot. And if you die, at least you die um, eating unlimited amounts of food. Okay, yes. that's all. Bye. Yeah, I I guess I, I thought that cruise ship was like the bi- it's the biggest cruise ship that's ever existed, right? Well, but then we Googled it and it seemed like other cruise ships have the same amount of floors and stuff. Yeah, I think it is like, I mean, it's definitely one of the biggest. I don't know if it's the biggest cruise ship. If you subscribe to our Patreon, I won't <laughs> say it here, but we have a theory about cruise ships uh... that you won't want to miss uh, it's it's a pretty good theory it's honestly a good theory <laughs> blew my mind. honestly Mar- a good Maria theory said it and it blew my mind it blew my mind too and i think it actually blew john tenney's mind too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah i don't i'll say i've been on cruises i've had fun on cruises yeah i'm open to it i've never been but yeah. i'm open to it next message Hey, chickens, it's me, Flo, from Nashville. Hello. I don't know if I still need to say from Nashville or what, but anyways, I like this new phone number. Of course, you're in my contacts or right underneath Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, I just finished listening to your podcast about um, TV shows and stuff like that, and you guys talked about <laughs> the idol. Oh. I'm going to confess, my husband and I, we are watching it. I know it's done. I, I believe it's done. I'm not really sure. But um, we haven't seen the last two episodes. And I just freaked out when you guys started saying it had to do with Selena Gomez. Because when we first started it, everybody was saying, I think it was about Britney. Oh. Because that's what my husband said. He was like, this is all about Britney, oh. you know, like all the crazy shit that she's gone through and everything. I was like, no, no, no. This seems more like Selena Gomez because her mom died, I believe, two years ago or something like that. She had a meltdown and she hasn't been seen doing anything. And I know she dated the weekend, but mm-hmm. then they broke up. And he, he's weird. He's a weird little man. Um, he's weird. He's I, don't, I don't do social media. <laughs> My husband does. He does the Twitters. Um, he does the Twitters. <laughs> he says that the weekend will go on there and just ramp about all kinds of crazy things. I think he called out McDonald's one time or an Oreo. I don't know, some shit like that. So I was like, no, this motherfucker is airing out all her shit on national TV. So I called it. I told my husband, I was like, dude, guess what just happened? Like, they were talking about how the idol is about Selena Gomez. And I was like, I fucking told you. I called it. I called it. And that just made me really happy that I kind of figured it out. But who knows? Who knows? What if it is about Britney? You know, I love Britney. Um, Maybe not her music. (laughs) But that poor child (laughs) has gone through some shit. And, you know, she keeps on trucking. So... I'm a big Britney fan because of that. Because, you know, strong women, yes. Um, well, strong women, really yes. I to say just that because I got really excited about it. So now I'm just going on and on and on. And you're like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on with this chick? She's not funny today. Um, I guess because I had a little nap. <laughs> okay, well, uh, love you, girls. Bye. Bye. Yeah. We were just talking about Britney. <laughs> I, she's been releasing videos like, whoa, on Twitter. Yeah, she has. Is she, she's turned off the comments on Instagram. There's no comments. Allowed. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, I don't look at her. I only, um, she's like all over my Twitter feed. Yeah. Um, it looks like maybe she got her veneers taken out or something. Oh, yeah. Some, her teeth look different. Yeah. There's like a gap at one Did point. Did she have veneers? It looks like maybe she had veneer. I don't. No, her teeth definitely look different. People have pointed it out. I don't know what happened if she got some dental work. I'm saying I'm worried. And then that's all I'll say. I'm concerned. I hope she's okay. I hope she's okay. I hope she's in a good. I hope she has someone 
yes. normal, ethical, and moral watching out for her mm-hmm. in her camp. Mm-hmm. None of these and family I wish her members. The best. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, I wish her the best. Love, Brittany. Wish her the best. Hope she's safe. Next. <laughs> front of your husband means he he loves you yeah i mean i agree i agree (laughs) (laughs) might as well face it you're addicted to late oh boy another one might as well face it you're addicted to late you might as well face it you're addicted to late you might as well face it you're addicted to Wow, that's beautiful. That was really gorgeous. Wow, thank you. Second one of those calls we've gotten. Interesting. Hello, this is Amber from Los Angeles calling in. Just listening to the mailbag episode, and it's more stuff about the men's restrooms. And I I have a hot take, Uh a very hot take, that, of course, men are weird in the restroom because they're actually kind of just like, peeing with their dicks in front of each other. And I wonder if it would be a little more weird for the ladies if, like, our toilet seats only had little walls in between them. If there were little walls in between the toilets and you could make eye contact with a girl and talk to her while you're pissing, I think then I would I would probably put up a social barrier of... I don't want to talk to you. I just want to pee and get out of here if I don't know you. And I wonder that if the men's urinals were in individual uh, stalls, mm-hmm. like all of them across the board, 
if the mm. men would be a little more friendly because then they wouldn't have to worry about like, I don't know, not worry about, but you know, just not put up a social barrier because you feel like you're exposing your genitals to each other. I, that's a hot take. A hot take that I just thought about. I petition for more privacy for men in their restrooms so that their social barriers can come down in the restroom. That is all. I, yeah, that's a good point. I agree. That's a very good point. Yeah, if there were no, if you could see another woman peeing next to you. That'd yeah, be I would feel weird. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, like hey, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want a next message. Hi, ladies. This is Angelica. Angelica um, Counter. Counters. I'm on my lunch break and I'm super tired and it's late, but... I was listening to this week's mailbag, and you guys opened up the voicemail uh, episode with my voicemail. Ooh. That was super exciting. I was talking about uh, the ghost doing my bra strap. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, why am I calling right now? Oh, yes, because after that, there was a girl who called in, um, and she played. She talked about the uh, sleep paralysis um, app, and like she like lived alone, and there was a creepy voice she heard. That reminded me, when I was, I had sleep paralysis so much in high school. Sleep paralysis. Um, like, it was just, like, a constant thing, and it sucks. But another weird thing that was happening is my dad worked really late at night, and he would come home. He worked, like, all the way at LAX, um, and we're in the Valley. So he would come home super late, right? But I swear, for the longest time, I was so confused and scared because at night, maybe, like, around 10, I would, like, hear him, quote-unquote, him, like, I would hear the gate open, I would hear him drive his car in, I would hear, like, the door, like, I would hear oh. exactly everything that he would be, like, coming home, but, like, hours before he's actually home. And I don't know, maybe I was half asleep, maybe I was hallucinating, I don't know, but I felt very much uh, not asleep, and I would just freak out, because I'm like, who the fuck is, like, in my house? Like, I heard footsteps, everything, and I'm like, my mom's asleep, my brother's asleep, like, I'm not asleep. What? So that just reminded me of that, like, weird, creepy uh, experiences in the house and sleep paralysis. But, yeah, it was just the longest time. And I was, like, like I would look outside, like, my window, and, like, I wouldn't see the lights on. But, like, I would hear things. Like, the same thing. And then, of course, like, when my dad's actually home, like, later, like, you know, super late, you know, yeah, then I would have to see the lights on, like, when he brings a car in. But it was just... The weirdest thing, and it's just like it baffles, like it still baffles me. So I'm like, was I, was I, was I just asleep or like half asleep? Like, it felt very real, and I was super freaked out, and I was just like in my bed, anxious, like, what the fuck is happening? Like, nobody else hears that. Oh, all right, I'm gonna make lunch. <laughs> Bye. You know that happens to me whenever I would like go on vacation or go somewhere. Yeah. I would. I don't know if I'd be half asleep, but I would feel like my cat walking on the bed. Oh, interesting. And I would wake up, be like, or I would hear like phantom meows. I'm like, oh, is that my cat? Or like, I would feel how even weird. now I wake up and I'm like, oh, it must be the cat walking on the bed and there's nothing on the bed. I wonder what that is. Does that happen to you ever? No. Huh. <laughs> no. So I don't know if I'm like dreaming that like the cat's walking on the bed or like... Yeah, maybe it's a dream. It's I don't I've never experienced it's that weird. phenomenon before. Mm, you will. Yeah, apparently. Weird. But maybe it's just because my animals are always in bed with me. Like I never spend a day without them. Right. Yeah. But I guess They're I mean on vacations there. I've never experienced that either. Yeah, so Yeah, it's weird. That is weird. Well, we got one last voicemail. Oh man. Hey ladies. So I listened to your episode today where you talked about Spence Nick Suck Face. And yes. at the end, you asked for anybody to call in with their blindside stories. And I, this is a story I've been dying to tell, but it doesn't like fit in. And you asked the perfect question. So my brother was found out to be a pedophile. <gasps> he was 29 at the time, thought he was talking to a 15-year-old girl, turned out to be a local vigilante anti-pedophile group doing like the Chris Hansen thing. Oh. And he got caught in a whole sting operation, caught oh. on video, on Facebook, on YouTube. It got sent to his wife. So oh. she made him call us to tell us what the fuck was going on. <gasps> uh, I have not talked to him since that day because oh, he's 12 years older than me. 
uh, I had my own trauma going on, and I went to him with it, and then he Oof. turned around and tried to be an abuser. So, yeah. gross, cut off, Aww. never spoken to again, deserved, sorry. punch your local pedophile. Bye. <laughs> Wow, that is devastating. Yeah. Oh, when your man. family member, like, oh, wow. I can't imagine. Oh, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Oh, How do man. you even, like, navigate that? Oof, wow. I'm sorry. Well, Damn, that's awful. Yeah. Man, wow, I'm Chris Hansen style that. sting it's operation. It's like that, that show we love, Undercover Underage. Undercover Underage. Or Underage Undercover. Underage Undercover. It's, it's one about, of those. like, Sosa. It's, uh, I think they're called Sosa. Sosa. I think they're Canadian. No, I think she's in, it's Oklahoma or somewhere in the Midwest. Or maybe this season they're in Canada. Oh, they moved. This, se- this season they're doing it from Canada. Oh, because I looked them up and I looked up her Instagram and I thought she was in like Oklahoma or Arkansas or somewhere. It's crazy that dudes fall for that stuff still. It's really... How do you not just assume everyone everything's a sting operation? <laughs> I know. Well, um, if you don't watch Undercover Underage, I guess it's on... Uh, it must be on Max, Max now, and it's on Discovery Plus. Yeah. But it's this woman, and she has an organization, and she has adults who are like 20 years old, but they look younger, yeah. and they set up Instagram accounts, and they like Photoshop them a little bit, and... Um, She's it's in her like an late, Instagram late thirties, and she yeah. looks. She puts on like a wig and like makeup she looks and stuff. Good. She looks yeah, very she young. looks really young. Yeah. Um, it's not even Instagram that these people find the girls on. It's like something else that I can't. It's I don't. Some weird. It's some chat other rooms. app. Yeah, it's some weird chat room app. Yeah, I don't even um, know what the app is. Yeah, but um, sure. Yeah, um, I don't, but, I've never heard of it. I don't know. <laughs> but uh. So they they're actually literally talking to these girls who are in their 20s, but look young and they say they're like 11 and stuff. And then they'll video chat with them and like through lighting, they'll like turn the lights down and they'll be wearing like pigtails and they're in fake rooms with like teddy bears and stuff. Posters and shit. Yeah. So they think they're actually talking to young girls and then they'll involve the police and do sting operations. And so it's really crazy. Um, It's a really good show. Um, It's she's doing really um doing good amazing work work. yeah uh but it's sosa if you want to look it up it's interesting that's what it is yeah uh all right well uh keep on undercover underage all right so keep uh keep on calling our voicemail line insert jingle here six to six sixty three for twenty sixty nine nice we appreciate your voicemails and your reviews and joining our Patreon. You guys are the best. I'm Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And that's all, folks. Bye. Goodbye. Powered by ACAST.